If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Psalm 66, 18 to 20. The psalmist is declaring this truth. Prayer works. You hear that? Prayer works. The psalmist is like a satisfied customer singing praise for whatever they have bought and however it has worked. That stuff that you, you order online because it says it will do it. And it, they're singing praise because it does. Most of the time I, I'm a little upset because it doesn't work like they say. But I tell you, prayer works. And the psalmist is announcing it to the world. Prayer works. It produces results. We have seen God at work in this church. We have seen the results of prayer. I, when I was thinking about this the other day, I just thought, I thought about Morgan. You know, seeing her last week and where she was at just a few months ago. I thought about Rod and, and where he was at and what he was waiting for. And, and there's so many others that we don't even always give God the praise that He deserves. But the hand of God is moving in people's lives. Because <coughs> prayer works. You know, so, so often we forget to give God the glory. <coughs> so often we forget to even go to God. Because there's probably nothing that causes us more apprehension than the thought of prayer. It's probably one of the greatest fears of many people. I read the other day that if you want to quiet a group of adults, just ask them to pray. If you want to really quiet a group of adults, ask them to pray out loud. And it gets quiet. <coughs> But God wants us to come to Him. He wants us to come to Him with our prayers, with our concerns, and know that we can communicate with the Creator. You ever thought about that? That we have a direct line to the Creator, to Almighty God. That we can go to Him. Now, you probably figured out that this week in the Believe series is about prayer. And the key question is, how do I grow by communication with God? How do I grow by communicating with God? And the key idea is, I pray to God to know Him, to find direction for my life, and to lay my request before Him. So first, we want to know God. Well, you know God, you know a friend by communicating with them. You know a spouse before you get married by communicating with them. And so we need to communicate with God like we might communicate with anyone else. And then you need to communicate with God to find that direction and where you're going in your life. And to put your requests before Him. So what is prayer? A simple answer is communicating with God. Quite often, that's just taking a moment in our day to say, Hey God, I'm here. Here's what I need today. This is what I want tomorrow. And could you do this for me next week? You know, that, that's sometimes how we seem like we approach God. Just with this laundry list of things that we want. But prayer is not designed to move the hand of God, but rather to change our heart. I've heard story after story and read many times of someone beginning to pray for somebody else that they had a problem with. And so they're going to pray for that person to change, and it's us that changes. Because we start looking at it and God starts speaking to us, and we change. And even when we spend more time with God in prayer, when we spend that time there with Him, we begin to understand even better that God is a personal God. Remember, personal God was one of the things back in the early part of the Believe series? 
And when we get to know God and we really get down with God in prayer, He's a personal God. It doesn't make any difference if it's that person that every once in a while puts out the 911 prayer or the believer's daily divine dialogue, the one who just is continually in prayer, is continually talking to God. There's an element of submission in a heartfelt prayer. And you're saying to God, hey God, I can't do this by myself. Would you come alongside? Would you help me with this? And you say, I'm, I'm saying to God, God, I know you care. So I'm just going to put this over in your lap. You see, God cares about the little things and he cares about the big things. You know, quite often we'll, we'll take the big thing to God, but the little things. This really came home to me several years ago, even before I went into the ministry. We lived in Morganville. There was a couple down the road. He was a retired machinist of some kind. He was kind of a contrarian guy. I mean, he just, he, he didn't come to church. He wasn't a believer, but his wife was very strong in the faith. And she was a believer. And he was storming around the place one day because he couldn't find something he was looking for. And so she said, well, she would go look for him. Said she walked into the garage. She stood there a minute and said, God, I need you to show me where whatever it was is at. Said she opened up her eyes. She walked over and there it was, right where God told her to be. And it made me realize, God, God does care. He cares about the little stuff. Because see, it doesn't make any difference how big it is to us or how little it is to us. It's all the same to God. God's God. It, it doesn't, it's all the same. The little things and the big things are all the same. Now Jesus, he talked about prayer in different ways. In Matthew 6, 5 through 7, he says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. You know, he's saying they want to stand out there. They want everybody to know they were praying. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is, in, who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is undone in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that we heard because of their many words. You know, some of them wanted to keep on praying because they just thought the more words they spewed out. But you catch verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now Jesus isn't saying in those words, you can only pray in private. You hear that? He's not saying you can only pray in private. But we're encouraged to take that time to get away and pray. We're encouraged to pray in worship and with others. But we're encouraged to have that ongoing private conversation with God. That praying without ceasing, continually going. As you're driving down the road and you see the sunset or the sunrise, as you're, as you're just looking out at what God has done, at the trees this morning that were white on one side and not on the other, just that continually communicating with God. And then in Luke 11, we're encouraged to bring our needs and concerns continually before God. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who sees and everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Don't just pray once and say, all right, God, it, it's yours. Keep bringing it to God. Keep bringing it to God. How many times have we heard people talk about, my grandmother prayed for me for years that I've come to know Christ. 
or somebody else is praying, continually keep on praying. Mark Batterson, in his book, The Circle Maker, talks about praying for years for God's movement. He's a pastor in the Washington, D.C. area. Started a church. They wanted property. There's not a lot of property to be had in Washington, D.C., but there was one spot. He said, he, he prayed around it, continually. He'd go down there every week or so and pray around it and pray around it, <coughs> claiming it for God. We are to keep praying. Praying boldly enough sometimes. I know I fall short in some of these areas because we're impatient and we think we've done it. But I know that if we pray, God can move them out. We just need to continually bring it to God. Now, as we heard read one day, something, you might move the mountain one wheelbarrow at a time, but you can move the mountain. When, Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he didn't give them a lecture. He didn't even go to a theological study. There's just three little rules about prayer. First one's the old Nike logo. Just do it. you got to start someplace. So just do it. Just go to God, talk to God like an old friend, and communicate with Him. And then remove the distractions when talking to God. You ever try to talk on the telephone and somebody else is over here is having a conversation and you're kind of divided between them? Now maybe some people can do that, but you know there's just these distractions going on and there's things happening. Well, don't let the WMDs destroy your prayer life. Anybody know what the WMDs are? Weapons of mass distraction. There's always distraction. We have so much technology and things that we can always be distracted. Look for that quiet, as it says in Psalm 46, 10, 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And in third, practice simplicity. Don't make prayer complicated. Simply ask God to talk to Him like you do anyone else. Sit down and have a conversation. Now you know when you have a conversation with somebody, you speak to them, and then you stop and they speak back to you. So often, we do all the talking, and then we get up and leave, and we forget to listen for God. Number the prayer is recorded in Luke 11, 2 4 is simple. Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, and, also, and we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Now that was just a pretty simple prayer that Jesus gave to the disciples that we have that we can pray. Now here's a paraphrase if you want to make it a little bit easier that I found the other day. Father, you are, a holy and, you are holy and good. We want to live in your kingdom. We need your help. Give us just enough for today. We need your forgiveness. Others need it too. Keep us on the right path. Don't complicate it. Just pray to God. Now Max Lucado in his book, Before Amen, says keep it simple. And he calls this the pocket prayer. And he says if you start looking at prayers in, in the gospel, Jesus, all the prayers kind of follow the same pattern. First, Father, we come just like a child to Dad. And we get up in his lap and we have a talk with him. 
You are good. Because God is good and we can approach without fear. I need your help. We need to ask and leave it in God's hands. I know that we so often, we say, God, it's yours, we're going to leave it in your hands, and then we go over to God and say, I want it back because I'm going to try something different. I've got a plan to fix this. So we don't always leave it there. It says, heal me. God wants you to be physically, emotionally, and spiritually whole. It says, forgive me. Forgive me. Confession is not punishment. It's the time to expose our sins to God and let Him extract, extract them from our lives. And then they need help. God answers our intercessory prayers as well. And we say thank you. Give thanks always in Jesus' name. Amen. You just need to be real before God in your prayer life. Pour out your heart. Because see, God can handle whatever you bring to Him. Whatever you dump in His life. And you know what? God isn't going to be surprised by what you bring. <coughs> Prayer is just being with God who is always with you. But sometimes we have to go looking. You see, the disciples did that in the Scriptures. Several times in the Scriptures... Jesus went off to pray. The demands got too great. Decisions were important. He was tired. His energy was depleted. He went away to pray. And the disciples would go looking for him. But we all have those same things happen in our lives. But so often we forget to go away and pray. When our energy is depleted, when times are tough, when things are happening, we don't make it a priority. And prayer can be so simple. The leper's prayer in Mark 1, verse 40, if you will, you can make me clean. <coughs> if you will, you can make me clean. That's a pretty simple prayer. In Mark 2, verses 1 to 12, the friends, they had, a, they had a friend that was a paraplegic or quadriplegic, but they just, they brought him to Jesus and they didn't say a word. They just went up on the roof and took the roof open and lowered the guy down in front of Jesus. They didn't even speak. They just brought him to Jesus. In Luke 18, the tax collector, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And there are so many others in the scriptures. They're throughout the through scriptures. Simple prayers. Now, we don't want to leave out the part about God answering prayer. We've, we've seen prayers answered. But there's three ways that God's going to answer your prayer. Everybody wants a yes, Jesus. And God does say yes. God, We've seen God work. We've seen things happen. But sometimes God says no. And God knows what we need. And sometimes God says wait. We just read a devotional last night and a guidance devotion about the couple that had the one child and they wanted the second child and it just was not happening and they realized. It was wait. It might be a different way of getting the child than the way. So when you go to God, and, and you're listening, if you're listening for that answer, you might get a no or a wait, and you might get a yes. And it's not always in our time. As Andrew was telling the kids, God measures time differently. God knows best, but we have to listen. Years ago, remember hearing the stories of how they used to go down to the lake or the pond or the stream, and they would 
cut ice, and they would take it, big chunks, and they would take it to the ice house, and then they would cover it up with sawdust to help it last longer and insulate it, and that's how it kept things cold. And a man, one time, he lost a really nice watch in the sawdust of the ice house. And he could not find that watch. He dug through the sawdust, and he dug through it, and he couldn't find his watch. And a little boy came to him and said, can I find your watch for you? He said, well, if you can find a watch, fine. And the little boy went in the ice house. And he shut the door. And he laid down in the middle of the room. And he listened. Until he heard the tick, tick, tick of the watch. And then he knew where it was at. Sometimes... We just need to listen for God to speak. The other day I was thinking about this and about prayer. I was thinking about some of the discussions we've had at uh, different meetings recently about how we find those people, bring the people in, the young people, start bringing more people into the church. And the other day, I was having a conversation with somebody else outside the church about this. And then Donna, we just need a movement of God. But it starts with us praying for the movement and listening for God. So, as you take this, as you claim this, be praying for the movement of God.